And we are live. Welcome. This is Nick Lakani here with Groove Leaders Unite and uh, Groove Asia Leaders Unite. And what we have today, we have some advanced work for you in terms of your marketing. We also have some events for you to have a look at. So let's take it away. Let's bring, uh, bring up the slideshow and let's see what we're going to do today. Now, Today, we're going to look at cutting edge strategies for market domination. Well, wow, big title. Well, we've been doing a lot of work on uh, this type of thing, right? Over the last few weeks, uh, we've done a lot of work on marketing, on um, niching down, on really micro focusing on who your target market is, what you're providing, what benefits are they getting, what problems are you solving? And that is important when you look at courses and communities, because why, why else would somebody go through an online course? Because they want to solve their problems. And you're the person who's going to solve it for them. Now then, let's take this away. Um, one of the things that we want to look at over here uh, is the idea as, uh, as I said, the, in terms of the courses and communities, the idea is that we want to actually go and develop these courses. Now, why is it that we're looking at courses? Well, why should you care about courses? And uh, have a look at the figures that I have on the screen here. These are estimations that within six years is projected that the online courses uh, global uh, market will reach a turnover of something in the region of nearly 850 billion US dollars. Now, what you can do is to share your skills, knowledge, experience, or passion and put it into an online course. Why not? Okay. There's lots of reasons why you, you could want to do this um, in terms of, you know, what, what is it? Why, why is it that you think that you, you would actually go ahead and do this? For example, you could have hospital bills, uh, school bills for your kids, put them through school or university. And uh, you also may want to save up for your retirement. And um, one of the things that for me, uh, I think the biggest uh, thing for me is that I want to have financial freedom. I want to be able to have financial freedom. And that's important to me. And I'm, as I'm doing this, I want to help you and come along with me. That's how we not only create courses that you can sell while you sleep, but also creating communities that you can actually then nurture and grow with your community. Have this idea that you've got super fans. Have the idea that you've got a ready-made uh, place where you've got, um, you know, for example, when you do live shows, you've got moderators and admins that are there to help you because they believe in you and what you're doing for the community. And if you can get to that place, that's brilliant because you don't need to have 10 million people, 10 million customers. Um, you need to have, I mean, if you have a thousand customers who each are spending a hundred dollars with you every year, that's not a bad business, is it? You wouldn't actually turn that down, would you? No. I think, I think that there, there's something to be said for quality, not just quantity. And that's one of the things that we're going to, to look at today is things that can help us increase our marketing. All right. Make, make it more, uh, more sustainable, more targeted, uh, more effective in reality. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, we want to do is to uh, let's uh, take this away. So one of the things that we're going to do is to have a look and see what we're doing today. And uh, this is the agenda that I've got over here. And uh, we're going to look at uh, its latest trends in digital marketing and uh, data analytics, the uh, use of AI and other kind of machine learning uh, type of strategies. And also, finally, uh, using multiple channels or, or an omni-channel approach. And we've got a couple of examples of that as well. Okay. Now, in terms of the advanced marketing techniques, and uh, one of the things that I want you to look at over here is about no matter what size of business you're in, you can do with having, you know, connecting with people, 
Uh, in this case, we've got influencer marketing, where you connect with people, have relationships with them, and they help you grow your brand. Um, and in this particular case, folks, uh, an example could be quite simply who is, you know, bigger than you uh, to start off with, you know, when you start off with zero followers, everybody's bigger than you, right? But you've got to go and have a relationship whereby uh, not just, not just cash, you know, what you want to do is to give something in return to use other people's networks, other people's influence. Yes. And so, for example, you could, uh, as a course creator, tie in with somebody who does something which is not the same as you, but is uh, doing something slightly different, but in the same sort of niche. Maybe you have uh, ideal clients that are in common with your two businesses. And if you can actually you know, pitch to them as to who you are, what you do, you're the real deal, you can actually... Uh, for example, uh, get a spot on their podcast, on their channel. And in return, you do give them the opportunity to come to your channel as well. This type of joint venture uh, is very important uh, for growing because, what you again, what, what you're looking at is about growing networks, not just for yourself, but for both parties. That's the important thing for both parties because, you know, for example, if I've got uh, 10,000 followers in a particular niche and I'm going to come and talk to you and put you on my channel, well, I want something from it as well. And that could be, for example, the kudos that, hey, I'm, give, I'm giving access to this brilliant expert over here who's going to talk, talk to you about something that I'm not the specialist in. But if I do that, that also makes me look good right so uh, those of you uh, who are watching this uh, just put a like and subscribe uh, make sure you subscribe uh, put in hashtag live if you're watching this live or hashtag replay and tell me what you think give me examples that you've been involved with or things that you know about i mean uh, you know we've got a lot of um, I, I did a lot of coaching and one of the things that uh, i used to do was to get uh, other coaches uh, coming along to actually speak at my events or to uh, in, for me to introduce them or, and to present. And what that did was that that actually worked great as a uh, symbiotic process, as a process by which where everybody wins, especially the viewers, the followers, the, the people in your community, because they get a lot of quality and input that could help them in their business. That's the key. That really is the key. Yeah, Remember, all the way throughout the 20-week session that I'm running right now, we talked about the quality and the outcomes, the results for your communities, what they get out of it. Therefore, this idea of connecting with uh, people who have networks, great. In return, as you grow, you can then help others come along as well. But it's not just paying it forward. You are still going to benefit from having other people on your channel and then you appearing on theirs as a influencer. So in terms of the uh, other aspect of this, uh, we're looking at uh, video marketing. And uh, this, is, um, uh, this is very, very big, isn't it, right now? over the last five years, four or five years, uh, especially with the onset of TikTok. And uh, one example we've got here is the idea of Chipotle. And uh, what they actually did was, um, uh, they actually went through a process by which they created a series of uh, adverts, a series of TikToks that actually made things fun, uh, they lighten the mood. They engage the audience. They asked, you know, they were asking questions. They got responses from the audience, and that engagement means that people are are watching. People are keep are paying attention. People are liking your brand or your the way you do things, for example. So therefore. Uh, in that particular way, uh, TikTok has come around at a good time, uh, whatever you think about the the way in which it came about. But uh, not only so, not only that uh, TikTok actually gone and made an impact now, but also 
uh, it's actually made uh, the other social media companies like uh, YouTube and uh, Instagram, etc. Look at short form videos uh, in terms of reels or shorts and so on. Um, and it's a it's a genuine tactic to create shorts um, for those people who love them, for those people who actually like them, for those people who don't necessarily want to see a 45-minute video or a 15-minute video. They're happy with 30 to 60 seconds. And in that 30 to 60 seconds, you want them to feel, think, and do one thing. What is that? If you can identify that in your marketing, in terms of your shorts or your uh, TikToks, you too can actually get your message across to a lot of people and very quickly. Therefore, you you know, uh, especially with TikTok, uh, there's a lot of advantages of using TikTok in terms of the algorithm there. Uh, there's uh, advantages in using YouTube because you can actually have a mixture of the shorts and the long form content as well. Uh, you've got the idea of going live on on TikTok and, and on YouTube. So there's a number of different ways that you can do this. Um, uh, Instagram Reels, uh, Pinterest, you know, uh, you, you can actually create a, a short form video just using pictures and then putting text on the screen. And obviously those kind of things, the engaging information that you put on the screen, not just in terms of the audio, uh, but also of this, the visuals in terms of uh, titles or headers or, or even just a, uh, the captions. Uh, with with the actual um, uh, transcript of what you're saying on the video, or what this what, you know what is being said on the video, that can be very engaging as well. Remember, it depends on who you want to reach and where. Therefore, overall, you have to keep in touch with the aspects of digital marketing. It's it's the age we're we're in at the moment. The fact that you're watching this today means that you're keeping up to date. Great. Well, you need to do that regularly and see what you like, see what you think will be impactful in a positive manner for your ideal clients, for your community. Okay. Now, in terms of um, other aspects that we want to look at, uh, the idea about uh, data analytics and using that for, uh, you know, to make precision targeted marketing campaigns. Brilliant. Well, you've got the examples of Spotify and Netflix over there. So let me, let me just talk about those for a minute. In terms of, uh, we, we've all got subscriptions to uh, these kind of uh, streaming channels and uh, uh, for, whether it's be for movies, uh, TV shows, music, uh, or other items. Uh, the fact that you're watching YouTube, that's got an algorithm that will give you recommendations. And that's what uh, Netflix do. And notice that uh, Netflix actually give you recommendations on what it thinks that you like to see. And the algorithm there takes into account the previous shows or movies that you've watched. Now, for example, um, you may have a channel where there's, there's two people watching it, and, and you can get a little bit mixed up. Yeah, it happens. However, as, as a user, uh, I share a channel with my wife, and uh, all sorts of things pop up in there uh, that I don't like to watch, and um, she'll get similar things pop up, the things that she doesn't like watching. But, hey, that, that's the name of the game. The most important thing here, though, is the algorithm – is set in such a way that it's supposed to give recommendations. Also, it can then push certain things that it wants to push in front of you as well. And notice that, you know, if you're a big brand and if, you're, uh, if you've got a particular, um, mo uh, you know, a movie, for example, you, a, a brand could actually put pressure on Netflix to actually put it further up the charts to, to make it seen in different places. And that, that, that happens, unfortunately. Uh, you, as a business, have got to go and do your best to put yourself in front of potential clients. Sometimes that's with organic marketing. Sometimes that's with paid advertising as well. 
but it's effective. It, it can be effective. And what you need to do is to have the plan, is to have a budget, and especially with paid marketing, have a budget, and then look at the results. And there's a reason why we look, we call it data analytics. It's because there's information in there that you have to then sift through and gain insights from. So data analytics is there. The information is there. You have to go and learn. And that marketing is all about testing as well, isn't it? You know, you've heard about the A-B testing and so on. Therefore, if you are doing something like this, then put a test in place. Put two different videos at different times, at different locations, and then compare and contrast the results that you get from it, and then make a decision on the next wave of marketing. Just because one thing doesn't work doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. It may be that it's pushed out at the wrong time, the wrong audience. Um, it just, it just, you know, for example, a, a video on YouTube may just have the wrong thumbnail. One of the things that um, I, I know people who uh, create uh, YouTube channels and uh, consistently and are always on YouTube, but the fact that you put a, a red border around your thumbnail often can be a difference of anything up to five times the number of views. Same thumbnail. Therefore, the packaging is important as well. And that's another thing to look at in terms of the data. Okay, so it's not just about um, the uh, content. It's not just about the platform and so on. It's sometimes the packaging. And uh, if, for example, you have a product and it doesn't look great on the shelf compared to something which looks super cool, eye-catching, it's a nice orange, reddish color, a bright yellow maybe, catches people's attention. Well, people don't know what's inside of it they'll go more likely go for the eye-catching one. And that's what you have to do is to come up with something that will actually uh, do that, will help catch the eye. And in the first two or three seconds of a video, capture people's imagination so that it helps retain their viewing. In terms of the uh, Spotify aspect of it, the slight difference with Spotify is that what they did was they had a wrapped campaign and what they uh, what they went through was they actually gave an insight to the user the end customer as to what kind of things that they watched in order to educate them as to where they are in terms of their data and then give them recommendations so that was interesting in that um, they it wasn't just about putting things in front of them. It was about educating the audience as well. And, and that level of sophistication of the audience will only increase as time goes on because we are more used to being online, being you know, given recommendations by Netflix, Spotify, uh, Amazon Prime, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things in there. And therefore, the marketplace becomes more sophisticated as it goes along. Therefore, you have to look at that and then spot trends and look for opportunities. Now, the next item uh, is very interesting, actually. And, and in Groove Asia, we've covered AI so much, haven't we? Um, integration of AI and machine learning in market strategy as well. Integration of AI. Uh, we have a number of things in place. Uh, uh, Ching Yu Tan and Simon Lung have done so many things with AI. Let's look at our YouTube channel. Now, a couple of different examples I'm going to give you is about chatbots and also pricing strategies. So uh, you've got the example of Bank of America with their chatbot and uh, Delta Airlines with their dynamic pricing. Okay, well, let's get into this. First of all, you know at least a little bit about AI. Correct? You, you know you know a fair amount. Do you use AI? Um, yeah, I think we all do. You may not even know it. For example, when you, uh, over a year ago, uh, uh, I got a software called Descript, which is a video editor. Fantastic. And inbuilt under the hood is some AI, which then helps with the performance in terms of the uh, getting the sound recording to studio levels without having a studio. 
things like that. So there's a number of things in place over there without even knowing it. And more and more, there are uh, video editors and graphic editors and um, marketing tools that use and leverage AI to help you. Now, remember, don't just rely on tools without being able to use them in an effective manner. Ultimately, whatever you produce is still under your name. You have to take responsibility for it. Now, in the case of uh, chatbots, chatbot, uh, and, and you see this on, on the uh, Groove uh, CM site, right? So on the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen down here, uh, there'll be a little um, item called, you know, chat with us or talk to us, or there'll be a little message in there. And if you click on it, there'll be a chatbot that asks you what you're looking for. What is it that you want to ask? Now, in terms of um, what it does, these chatbots are programmed by you. You feed it information. You say, this is my company. This is what we do. This is how we do it. These are the web pages. Uh, this is the, these are the processes that I want to, you to be able to answer, use and answer the questions of somebody coming onto the website. And these chatbots, by the way, right now are available uh, for, you know, a reasonable, a reasonable uh, level of investment, actually, because anybody can set up their own chatbots now, not just Bank of America. Bank of America, what they did was they, uh, the chatbot was available 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. It was uh, answering questions. It was also, uh, if, for example, it doesn't understand your question, it'll tell you, I'm sorry, can you rephrase that, please? And ultimately, if you've used one of these, it you have to ask the question in the right way. Or, or So it is a bit of a skill. And as we go on, they will improve because right now, AI is the... <laughs> Is the dumbest <laughs> that it's ever going to be, <laughs> okay? It's only going to improve. And leverage that, use that in terms of your business. Now, what if you don't use it? Well, great, you don't have to. But then you will, in most cases, you will lose an advantage there. You will use lose the advantage of having something that answers people's questions 24 7, 365. Now, why wouldn't you want to answer somebody's question? Well, if you can't answer, the, uh, if, you don't, if they don't get the answers from your website, they'll go somewhere else. Well, you don't want them to go anywhere else. Therefore, look into chatbots. Very, very, uh, uh, very much available to everybody now. Uh, chatbot.io, Gr great link, take a look. In terms of the uh, using AI for pricing, and this is what Delta did, and and I, you know, to be to be honest, this type of thing has been um, around for a long time. Whereby there are certain times of day or night that the prices are higher or lower in terms of getting airline tickets, uh, in terms of the times of year, in terms of sporting events. For example, when there's a Super Bowl going on in Las Vegas in the middle of February. Do you think that you'll get likely uh, to get very cheap tickets to Las Vegas in early February? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. You're going to have to go to an airport, maybe two or three hundred miles away, rent a car, drive to Las Vegas, that kind of thing, right? And it happens all over Europe as well when we've got big, big soccer games going on. And um, as soon as the uh, it is known that a particular game is going to be at this location on this date, suddenly the airlines push up the prices by pro probably anything up to four hundred, five hundred percent. It happens. And but what the uh, this particular pricing strategy that Delta uh, used was the idea that depending on avail and this is the important thing it's not just about the the day and the time of travel and the location it's also about the availability and therefore 
as availability, uh, if there's a lot of availability, the idea is that you want to try and fill up the plane very quickly. Get it filled up as soon as you can. And therefore, chances are that the uh, flight's uh, tickets will be a little bit lower. But as it gets more filled up and as it gets nearer the time for takeoff, the prices will invariably increase. And also, the system, when you actually go and book something, I mean, we did this the other day, and booking for a flight to Spain, and it actually tells you there are only four more seats at this price for this flight because they want to get you to book straight away. Once it's booked, they've done their job. They want to fill the plane. Now, later on, there are things that can change and so on. And it's not so easy in, uh, in Europe, at least, to go and change your ticket without penalty. And therefore, they've done their job. They've gone and actually filled out the plane. And then they move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. How can you leverage this? How can you have a situation whereby you can use something like this? Well, one example is Eventbrite. Uh, if you run a live event and you put it on Eventbrite, market it on Eventbrite, you can actually limit the number of tickets that are on offer and also the price of those tickets and when they're available. And you can program that in. Very simple to do, very easy to do. Therefore, three months before the event, you can have an early bird offer and say, right, uh, the prices are $97 for a ticket. Great, but this is only available for the next three weeks. After that, they go up to 147 and then they're only available for another so many weeks. And then after that, it's 197 and a 247 or 297. And you can build up nearer the time you're charging top dollar for it. Again, it depends on how many tickets are left. And you can allocate certain number of tickets at certain price points. Very easy to do, very simple, and anybody can do it. Have a go at it. If you're a content creator and you create courses, there's going to be times when you want to actually create a live event. Great. Then go ahead and do it. Go ahead and use things like Eventbrite to help you market it. And the AI under the hood there will help you not only manage the uh, process, but also increase the level of revenue that you gain from each of your events. It's very doable, folks. doesn't matter what type of business or what size of business you have. Okay. Now, in terms of um, the final point that I want to go through over here uh, today is about the multi-channel uh, campaigns like Nike. All right. Now, uh, Patagonia, the omni-channel experience is something different. Well, let, let me have a look at that first. Okay. The idea is that... Depending on your brand, you may want to have a, an approach whereby you want to be available on many different levels, many different areas, or you want to uh, be a little bit more discreet, a little bit more picky, a little bit more exclusive, and only target certain places to market yourself. And that's what Patagonia did. Uh, it has um, a lot of... Um, marketing in terms of face-to-face -face and, uh, you know, the idea that you can actually have an, 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 a real-life experience with them. And then the online experiences are limited. But in return, they can actually go and um, they're, what they're doing is they're actually trying to increase the scarcity of access to them and therefore push the price up, put this idea that, oh, I can't miss that, the fear of missing out, yeah? So there's a number of things that you can do with that. So therefore, keep the marketing on, on the straight and narrow. Make it only on one channel online, for example. That's the omni-channel approach. The multi-channel approach, uh, things like uh, Nike, uh, what, what, this was part of a strategy to get to people in many different ways as possible, and to get them on board with the Nike brand, the Nike dream, the idea 
that you can actually go and um, just do it, right? Um, and in terms of the, um, uh, the brand, you want to put that brand in people's hands across different uh, socioeconomic um, groups, across different communities, um, increase the diversity. And that's really what they try to do. Okay, so uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but that's what they did. And, and it was successful. They, they managed to increase the, the brand loyalty that they had. They've got the big names like uh, uh, Michael Jordan, Charles Haley, you know, the, the real big guns from back in the day. But they've got, you know, whether it's uh, soccer players, football players, basketball players, uh, you know, they're, they're, big, they're world brands now, aren't they? And the brand, uh, the, the personal brand of some of these athletes transcends the team that they're playing with or the sport that they're playing in. These are world names. And therefore, to be able to know who Michael Jordan is, I suspect that at least half of the world's population today knows who Michael Jordan is. Maybe. I, I'm I'm sure there's some results or some data somewhere about that. But the idea is that Nike uses this sort of marketing and using different channels. For example, it could be all aspects of digital marketing. It could be posters on the side of a, of, of a freeway, of a motorway. It could be TV ads. And the TV, you know, the, the, the ad may not be actually saying, saying something specific. It's about uh, the, uh, the penetration of the brand name, the idea of the brand, what it means. Apple, Apple are very good at doing this. There are other, other companies as well, very, very good at doing this. They're not selling anything in their advert. In fact, they, they don't want to sell anything in the advert. They want to know, they want you to know that Apple as a brand is at the top of the tree there. And you have you're gonna to have to climb up that mountain to go and achieve your dream of owning an Apple iMac, a MacBook, of whatever the device is that they're selling. And that type of multi-channel campaign, and uh, in terms of um the way in which they do it is uh, not only interesting, but also very effective. Therefore, in terms of the, uh, the way in which they do things, the, the way in which that uh, you yourself can actually do this is to think about, focus on channels. Don't go mad with 17 channels at once. Maybe do it one at a time. Maybe start off with two and then add one after a certain period of time and keep working on the others as well. Remember, it's all about momentum. It's all about uh, the consistency with the marketing. Without that consistency, all your effort is wasted. You've got to be consistent. Now, what have we covered today? Well, We've had a look at the uh, trends in digital marketing, data analytics, uh, use of AI. AI is, I mean, it's, it's going to be a big topic, big, big topic. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, an AI challenge that we at Groove Asia are doing here uh, very soon. Uh, also, finally, we looked at multi-channel um, and omni-channel approaches, uh, things like Nike and Apple and so on. Okay. Now, in terms of the uh, what we can do is uh, one of the things that I always do is to say, hey, uh, hit me up for a consultation to do with courses, communities, or anything that we've talked about in these series of events that I've been running. And uh, therefore, look into the chat. There's a link in there. Uh, also, for example, uh, we want to look at the events that are coming up as well. Therefore, uh, what I'm going to do is to share the link with you and I want to go to um, show you what we have in of the events that are coming up right, so 
let's go and do that. Um, now, the events that are coming up, we have regular events, as, as you know. And uh, one of the things that we want to do is to actually show you the, uh, the time, uh, timetable or the schedule that we use. And in here, the events page, uh, the link that I've actually showed you, actually goes to this particular page over here. And you can see on here that uh, it's Wednesday today. Uh, what you have is in the early hours of tomorrow morning for my time, but depending on where you are in the world, there is a content generation AI challenge. This is going to be amazing, folks, by the way. And uh, this is going to be with uh, the world famous Ching Yu Tan and JJ Fernandez. They're going to rock your world tomorrow, talking about uh, the uh, Roof AI challenge, to giving you examples, giving you the ability to go and do more in that particular field as well. All right. So just have a look at that and sign up for that. Uh, you've got information there. Also, in the meantime, you've got various GLUs running from uh, Peter and Karen. Tyra's doing her power hour in there as well. That's great. And then for next week, uh, we've got similar items in there as well. And we've got the Groove Coaching in there as well next Tuesday, um, Monday, Tuesday, depending on where you are in the world as well. Lots of things going on, folks. And I want to encourage you to go and take part in these events. Without these events, how do you know what's going on? They're there to educate you. They're there to push you. They're there to uh, train you. They're there to inspire you. Make sure you take advantage of the, uh, all the training that we do. We've got five-day challenge coming up next week as well. And uh, that's going to be amazing as well. Again, we did one for Groove Pages a couple of weeks ago. We've got Groove Mail coming up next week. Remember, um, the, the challenge itself, uh, in fact, I'll put a link to it as well on here. Take a look at it. Make sure that you uh, actually go and watch it. And you can watch it live and ask questions. Uh, you can also uh, go and uh, watch the replay as well. Now, what I want you to do, in fact, I, why don't I just show you, show it to you on the here. This is the challenge page on here. Uh, you can see we're going to be doing uh, uh, Groove uh, Mail, and it's going to be myself and Peter. We're going to be uh, delivering it. These are the, five, the items that we're going to cover in the five days. And the idea is, and register down here. That's great. So the idea is that with these five-day challenges, it's going to be one hour a day, five days, and we're going to run them every month, and we're going to cover all of the Groove modules on there. It's going to be there for you. Give you the basics to go and get started with your business in Groove. That's it. Very simple. Very clear. Now then, remember, get in touch with me. Put, uh, give, send me any questions that you wish. And what we're going to do is I want you to make sure you take action Look at the marketing in your business. Look and see what you're doing and creating courses. And think about just just go and make take action today. What is it you're going to do in the next 20 minutes? That's the most important thing. All right. In the meantime, let's get Simon to take it away. Hi, this is Simon Liang with GrooveAsia.cm. Are you already a part of the number one community in the world? If not, do so right now for free training and support, along with live sessions to help you succeed. Start now by joining us in our private Facebook group and get more exclusive video content on our YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe with notifications turned on for all updates. Join our community right now. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you on the inside at GrooveAsia.cm.